Did we not hit that? I didn't hit it. <laughs> I hit the audio I record you, button. I swore you hit it. I swore I hit it as well. Um, whatever. Episode 73, I'm here with Hunter Lenar. Um, I probably should redo the intro, but I don't feel like it. So I guess the quick summary of the intro is yes. book Hunter for tour. Go see the shows. I'm sure we'll plug them all at the end. Thank you. Uh, I'm booking music videos for the end of the year. Hit me up if you're interested. Zadek designs it all. Zadek Brooks designs it all. This cool Sh- stuff. Shout out Z. Uh, shout out Z. Yes. Uh, we just did five minutes of a podcast that didn't make it into the camera. It's all good. <laughs> so we're sorry here. Life's good. Yep. Um, thus folks, Zarathustra is heading out on tour. Uh, you guys are going Midwest, July, late July, early August. It's going to be a beautiful time. Band Absolutely. Name, we inherited song names rule. Uh, yep. I think the cool part about the song names is that like they're so eye catching. And I think yep. we're in a world of like, we always have the market being oversaturated. And I yeah, don't true. love that phrase because I think it like, I think it's always been oversaturated. I think that's the nature yep. of art is that there's more art produced than can ever be consumed. And like, oh, that's yeah. the challenge is trying to break through that. And so then the question is like, how do you break through that? And a lot of times the common answer today is TikTok. It's reels, it's Instagram. Yep, it's absolutely. And those are all great things, but there are other ways to do it. And I think the song names are a really brilliant piece of that of like, I don't think it's an accident that the two most eye catching song names, are the two most streamed songs. Gotcha. Like, yes, to me, that's a very, yeah, that's probably because folks like me scrolled and said, what the fuck? Artery records can never want. Yeah. Artery records could never want who's gauge Lanza. You know <laughs> yes. what I mean? Like it's, it, that's all Andy's. He's the madman behind it's, the, on the art there. But you know, it's, I'm very excited because like, I feel like since it is eye catching, like I feel like you just said, like music's oversaturated. Uh, like now it's easier to ever get into like content creation or like making music and stuff like that. But I feel like you could like luck out and like get like a really lucky TikTok or like mm-hmm. YouTube video or something like that. But I also feel like just having steez yes is the way to do it. Hundred <laughs> percent. That's that's I, Andy. He's got he's got some steez for sure. That is a perfect word for it. Yeah, and it's just a way to yeah differentiate yourself. Where there's so many song names that I think we've all heard a hundred thousand times, and it's mm-hmm. like. Yeah, I don't. I've never been in a band. I've never had the problem of naming a song, and I don't mm-hmm. think I would do great at it. But I think the way that you guys are doing it is a really valuable strategy that I wish other bands would like look into. Yeah, and it's like thank you. It tells me that it's like fun. I think is the other piece that I loved. Oh, about it, where absolutely. It yeah. tells me everything I need to know about the energy within the band and how like you guys are taking it seriously enough to do it well, but like it's also still fun. It's about having friends and homies first, and like yeah, I think there's a beautiful sentiment that's tied to the freedom there. Absolutely, I love like the because uh, it's just like a throwback to what we love, and it's just like the old like Acacia Strain and Muir mm-hmm. stuff like that like even like you know Waking the Cadaver and stuff like yes. that but it's just fun stupid music and it's just we want everyone to like jump around and like beat each other up and stuff yeah. like that so I mean like we're not like we don't have headless guitars and constant <laughs> takes and stuff like that we're just like we shout out to like we grew up to like in VFWs mm-hmm. and stuff like that so we're just looking for have fun and like we're trying to like I don't know it's like something about like there's been a lot of kids at these shows and they were obviously not around for MySpace mm-hmm. and like MySpace Deathcore and stuff like that. And they they love it more than like some of like the older heads do. So it's it's a very interesting dynamic what I, we're experiencing. So I think it speaks to the again another phrase that I use and I hate using is the cyclical nature of history. Mm-hmm. Of like yeah, they weren't around for the the broken side. I know broken side isn't the perfect reference, right, right. but there is like a fun silliness to that me era, attached yeah. to that band. Uh, and they weren't around for that. So then when it comes back again, it's fresh and new to them. And of course, yeah, it's what you grew up in. So it's a, yeah. a perfect. It's, uh, symbiosis of like y'all's home and then yeah. a new thing for new folks to go into. Yeah, absolutely. Well. And like we saw like a similar thing when I was in that crush band. Uh, like we put the album out, oh, we put two songs out that we did yeah. with our friend August. Mm-hmm. Uh, and oh my God, like one song just tracked like crazy. And I, I don't know if it was cause like it hit like a right playlist or something like that, but I'm pretty sure it was like people like kind of saw like a nostalgic thing, yeah. you know, for like the Hawthorne Heights and silver yeah. scenes and all that. So it's, yeah, it's just an awesome thing. I kind of, I'm a big fan that someone else like that's not like like in my same demographic or like upbringing can just see music like that and experience it and, and just be appreciative of it. Hundred percent. Is yeah. like the whole process as fun as the song names are? Like, is the recording process as like casual and like I don't know if DIY and casual are the right terms, but there's like a yeah, you're not taking yourself too seriously. You're not trying yeah. to like be anything. You're just trying to be you guys and have fun. And that's yeah, what yeah. I love. They're about. not just like, you know, like a demo, like somebody writes a demo and it's just like they smack the keyboard and that's it's, the that's the song title. I mean, like I'm sure there's a little there's a little method to Andy's madness. Like mm-hmm. he sends us like tracks and demos and stuff like that and he's like these are the song names for like even like new stuff that's coming out and it's just like this is awesome. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I can't wait to see how people are going to 
you know, react to this. So <laughs> it is also fun to have like public inside jokes where I assume some yep. of the song names are yeah, oh, memes oh that you God. guys have crafted over the nights. Yeah, sleepless nights on tour, the sleepless nights in the Walmart parking lot. There's, there's nothing better. <laughs> there is. There's those nothing tour more jokes fun. live on. It's to be able to like cement them in the. They they yeah. don't stop. No, not at all. And so yeah, publicize them. I think is also a fun way to like bring other people into the fold and yeah, include other folks in something that mm-hmm. they wouldn't have had access to otherwise. Oh, absolutely. Um. That's where we are currently. I like to, yeah, set the scene with like where we started from. So yep. my question for you is, yeah, where does mu- is music what comes first? Is photo what comes first? Like where is your first entry into this bizarre niche world that we're in? It all changed with COVID. Like uh, when before I went into COVID, I dived into like photo more, and mm-hmm. like I was definitely like underselling myself because I feel like like I to get my foot in the door, I was like, I can cut prices. I can do stuff cheaper uh, and yep. stuff like that. I feel like I'm still playing that game. And I play yeah. that game every yep. day in my life. Yep. Uh, but it was just like, I did like, I wanted to do photo video more, like dive into that, maybe do more music videos and stuff like that. I was doing music videos for like somewhere to call home. I was like filming live sets and stuff like Hell that. Yeah. And I was just trying to like branch out more. And then COVID hit and they're like, cause I always did music as a hobby. And then for some reason after that, I was like, you know, I like, I have all this nice gear and it sounds good. And like, I'm, during COVID, I learned how to use a DAW, and I was like, I kind of just want to like grind the music thing more. Mm-hmm. And like, thus spoke, I don't write any of the music, unfortunately, but it's just like, it's so much fun. I'm like putting everything I just just learned in COVID and stuff like that to use. And then like, I've also become like better at touring as the years go by, yeah. and like tackling touring from a like a musician's perspective as after touring first with like the crew's perspective. Mm-hmm has been awesome. I feel like I'm getting better at it. I'm trying to be, you know, learning etiquette, just trying to be, you know, be, be good. Hell you know, yes. Always you getting better. You said a hundred things I want to dive into. So Let's the place go. that I will, I will start on is, yeah, so it sounds like the camera stuff preceded the music stuff. And Absolutely. You kind of got in as a camera. Yep. When does, are you like 10 years old with your first camera? Like where does the camera stuff first get going? Uh, if camera stuff first started going like, obviously like, you know, like my mom and like my dad had like the little like, you know, digital camera and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And then like, obviously like I start to watch like YouTube videos and stuff like that. Everyone oh, had yeah. like the flip camera with like the USB. Mm-hmm. I remember my stepfather had that and I was like, this is so awesome. I could record like 10 seconds of footage, <laughs> which just became fine yep. 10 years later. <laughs> yep. Just like very cool stuff. I was always interested in like behind the scenes, like portions of like DVDs of like movies like Jaws and like the old like original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yep. There was like a bonus feature that was like behind the scenes. I wanted to see it because I was just always interested in production and stuff like that. So. I the same thing. I love knowing how things are made. And I've always yep. been curious of like, yes, anything in the universe. I feel like I could talk to a pilot and be like, yep. tell me about how this engine works. And I don't know nothing about engines, but I'm happy yeah. to like pick your brain about whatever you love and like understand how this thing works. And I think camera yeah. stuff came from a similar place to me of like, I'm not musical. That was never my gift. Like right I, I can play guitar enough, enough, but like anyone who can actually play guitar would look at me Still like, yeah, no, that I can't. So then the camera was like, okay, well I, I can't get into this world through music. So how do I find my way in? And the camera was another one. I was like, well, let's try this. Clearly the, the guitar and drums weren't for me. So let's yeah. see if maybe this is the way. No, I love that though. Cause like you've, it's just something about music. Like just so, uni- it is like a universal language. Mm-hmm. It's just loved by so many. And like, even like yeah. you get like, the person who is like a like he's a vet or something like that, just like going into a guitar store just to like buy something to shred on because he wants to learn. Mm-hmm. Like I, I feel like everyone's trying to get into it or just like at least show their appreciation for it, even if they just learn like a Skinner song or something like that. And <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate that. Yeah. I got my e kit six months ago and I'm yep. right in the midst of ACDC and all that's, the classics. And you got to start somewhere. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you got to start with the classics. Yeah, so. my favorite is uh, Summer Hits the Two Thousands playlist. I mean, <laughs> that's it's a good playlist. All the good yeah, stuff. I, yeah, I mean, even because like I, I can't play drums personally. Yep. Uh, but like whenever I pick up a kit, like I'll do like something simple or I try to just do like the. Uh, like the purdy shuffle or something like that. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And it sounded like with the camera stuff, you started with like the YouTube university that we yep. all got through and that Absolutely. process of going through all the tutorials and just, yeah, I assume then it's going to any show that you can possibly get access yep. to. Did camera stuff start with music or did it start with like portraits, nature, landscape stuff? Or oh, was it I, always music? I used to do like YouTube skits with my friends in high school. Damn. Okay. Yeah. yeah that was, <laughs> what a gold oh mine we just struck. It was so <laughs> much fun. Just like yes. learning to like, not even like just basic storyboarding mm-hmm. or just like having an idea written down in your notes app or something like that. Or just like even on a notebook. Cause I've had that before. Yes. Just like just stupid stuff with your friends. Were these like jackass style skits? Were they like no. serious skits? Yeah. Oh what no. Is the- like they were like, they were written out. There's a ton of cuts. There was like, like scene changes. Like short film, and characters. Almost. Yeah. Like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Cause uh, okay. this was before like YouTube really 
dove into like podcasting and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So every, nothing was longer than like five minutes. Okay. And like even then it took all day of the film. It's yes. just so much fun. Yes. What like stands out is like your your magnum opus <laughs> from those glory days. Like is there one that you look back and go like, eh, I don't love the body of the work, but there's this one that was the best day ever that was the most fun to put together. Yeah. There's like, we did one that was like a fake uh, version of the exorcist. Okay. Uh, like obviously we didn't do like any prosthetics or anything, but it was just like, it was like a demonic possession of a friend. Hell yeah. And then we had just like, just so much improv on the set. Yep. Like out of nowhere, like a friend of mine, like just found like a Bible that his mom owned and just like started just saying, like just reading yep. just random scripts from it. Just like, I had some funny friends growing Absolutely. up. Absolutely. I couldn't believe it. Absolutely. Were you like a theater kid at all? Like where did this no, like surprisingly, desire for Surprisingly, film come from? no. Okay. I can't believe it. Like when I tell people like, oh, I like this type of music, and they're like, oh, did you do theater in high school? And I'm like, no. Yeah. No way. I didn't do sports. I didn't do theater or anything. I just kind of like. I Just I, vibed. <laughs> I just vibed a little bit. Like I kind of played music a little bit. Like I grew up playing bass and stuff okay. like that. So before I played guitar, I played bass. Cause it was way easier Yep. because I was like, Oh, in rock band, like it's got like, it's got fewer notes. So I don't have to learn how to shred or anything. No chords yep. or like these bottom two strings don't make sense. Uh, so from that, I like played bass and like my friends band in high school and stuff like that. Just like always trying to like learn just like my cheap $200 Laguna bass. Yep. Uh, and then from there, uh, like I got like a camera for graduation, just like a cheap little like Canon or, or Sony. I don't even remember. But that's how I just started getting into the YouTube stuff. And I always wanted to like do more, get like cheap lighting and stuff like that from Goodwill, tripods from anywhere Catch I could. That anywhere I so could, quick. you know what I mean? Yes. So, I, I still have work lights that I use where they're just like the uh, four foot fluorescent LED tubes that mm-hmm. you would put in a warehouse. And it's like, I still use those. Yeah, like, still awesome. Set. They still work. And yeah, it's you get the $20 light and it's like, maybe I need the $50 one. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. this bug just And grows. if you can find like a red one or a blue one, <laughs> oh my God. Like, yeah. Was like your household artistically? It sounds like there was a ton of art flowing through you, and that they were like. Sounds like you were very nurtured and pursuing oh, this artistic Oh, my brother passion. was. Uh, he, yeah, he's like kind of like put it behind him a little bit, but like he was always like drawing. He was always like painting. Gotcha. He's super good at it. I mean, like life gets in the way, obviously, yeah. but you know, it's just like something that, like he kind of inspired me through, and then like no one else really in my family, unfortunately. Like my mom, like I grew up listening to like Michael Jackson and stuff like that sure. and like Metallica through my mom. So like it was very cool, like learning that through her. I learned to like appreciate different types of music through, through my mom and my dad too. Like my dad would always just have classic rock radio playing That's and same. stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. And like he, I remember in high school and stuff like that, he'd be like, oh, what CDs do you just buy? And he's like, oh, can I borrow them? And they were, they were like periphery <laughs> and stuff like that. Like it would be like periphery and like Tupac and stuff like that. <laughs> Going from the Rolling Stones to periphery is yeah. such an insane leap. Yeah, I'd, I would tell him like, yeah, there's three guitar players and there's like 80 guitar parts <laughs> in one part. Like There's three guitar players and 17 guitar strings or more than that. Yeah, and like obviously like, yeah. hopping from like Ozzy to like after the burial or something like that is... <laughs> I didn't expect him to get it, but like he he appreciated it for what it was. You know what I mean? I'm shocked by that. Yeah, my dad's a classic rock guy, and like I, I don't feel like I ever took the classic rock influence. Like it's never been yep. my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. But for sure, that is the basis for getting me into metal. Like growing yep. up on Stones, and then it's like, oh, I need something with a little more oomph in it. And yeah, then of course. Avenged Sevenfold comes along, and then yeah, now Very it's awesome. fucking Black Dahlia and all the fucking dumb shit we get into. There's, there's a question I like to ask a lot of people, Please, hit me. and a lot of people are just like in my age bracket and like how did you discover emo and stuff? Like, how did you discover like Avenged Sevenfold? That is a brilliant question. Uh, I don't know if I have a great answer for you. The place my brain goes to first is that I went to daycare as a kid, as we okay. all do. Yep. Uh, and what, so I was like four at the time. And mm-hmm. at the daycare, there was an older, like the, the woman who ran the daycare had an older son yep. who was, if I was four, he was like 10, 12 or something. And he was into good Charlotte. Awesome. And so he gave me the Young and the Hopeless CD. Uh, so like sick. Burned it. And I remember listening to that, and I was just talking about this with my family. I remember being in the car with my mom and, like, making her replay the anthem over and over and over. That's real. Point, that song just, like, doesn't work on the CD anymore. Oh, <laughs> Where my it just God. goes straight from track one to track three. It just skips right over track two. And I think from there, it was, yeah, just that ball got rolling, and yep. I got into, like, yes, this this punk world that then becomes Simple Plan and Avenged Sevenfold. And, yeah, slowly kind of go, maybe I like the heavier stuff more. And I... 
I don't know. I think that there's a, yeah, we start looking for the next like tier of fix almost mm -hmm. where you want the next more extreme thing and the more extreme That's thing. That's how it goes. Yep, absolutely. There. So I think my answer would be, yeah, good Charlotte. I don't remember getting into like Bring Me the Horizon. I don't know how okay. I like discovered that world. And, like, I mean, Avenged Sevenfold and Bring Me like are kind of like not far off. You know yeah. what I mean? Because like they're, they're on the same as like a, if they're playing a festival or something like that, they're on the same tier. Yep. You know what I mean? I wonder if I had a friend who got, yeah, I have no idea. I Maybe YouTube recommended videos. Saw a and, shirt or something. Something. Yep. Yeah, I have no idea. That's a... I was going to keep me up at night <laughs> trying yep. to figure out how I got into that. Yep. What was your gateway? I was, I was asked this question because like people will give similar answers. Mm -hmm. uh, I found it in like 2005. Like obviously with my brother, like he loves Blink-182 and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. So like Blink-182, all that stuff. Like I heard that constantly in the house, like CKY, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but, oh my God, YouTube. Yeah. I was watching a Mortal Kombat speed run. And That's this, where Call of Duty fucking montage is yep. where it came from. That is 100% where it yep. came from for me. And yes. uh, for some reason, I think there was something like back in the day, YouTube, like they were like copyrighted music or something like that. Because like mm -hmm. I remember a lot of videos like didn't have the audio of the game and yep. they would have copyrighted music. Yes. Silverstein's Ides of March was playing. That's so funny. And okay. it's, it's been downhill from there. That is exactly, yeah. Call of Duty montages at 100% is where I found a Absolutely. lot of this stuff. That was where Crown the Empire came from. Oh, that's real. Um, that's awesome. Yes. Uh, fuck. Thank you for unlocking that. You are yep. spot I got on. You. I always ask because like, people get like that are like, you know, similar age to me, mm -hmm. like have a similar response. They're like, oh, I watched like a World of Warcraft video and like Census Fail was playing. Yep. Like, yeah, and I guess then Guitar Hero probably empowers yeah, that, that further. Guitar Hero is huge. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's fascinating how many people I sit down here and they go, oh, yeah, I learned to play guitar on Guitar Hero. Or mm -hmm. My buddy learned to play drums from that. And it's yep. like, wow, what a what a wild thing where they were trying to make money and they inspired a whole generation of artists and they made their money along yep, the way. Just but, by like getting a license from a label and they're yep. just like, oh, song's cool, whatever. And then yeah. they put it in and they didn't realize that like yeah. they put a kid on to like AFI or something like yep. that. But I don't feel like like Madden, I don't feel like it makes football players. I feel like you're a football player and then you get into Madden. But yep. it feels like Guitar Hero did the exact opposite where it took, the, yeah. Got even, everyone into oh, Lincoln Park. Even the Madden soundtracks, like Madden 06 on the GameCube, like yeah. there's definitely like a kid that loved it because he loves the Cowboys, yep. and then fires it up, and then a funeral for a, play, or for, a funeral for a friend is playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like that's <laughs> you know it's a slippery slope. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's funny. Hell yeah, yeah. That's exactly where I got into it. Yep. Uh, so then that's high school. We're starting to get into the punk stuff, and you said you got camera for graduation gift, and yep. that's where you start to start to take things a little more seriously. Uh, th seriously is like in quotations. You know sure. what I mean? Because like. Through that, I was just like filming skits. Mm -hmm. uh, when I hit college, I took a photography course. Okay. And I was like, it's cheaper for me to buy a camera than it is to rent one, and I'm not doing this. Yep. I bought a T3i. Pretty sure it's a T3i. Uh, not a T5i. I don't, I don't remember. I'm More pretty of sure like it was early a Canon Rebels. T3i. Yeah. Uh, and I just like shot one long exposure class. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm bringing this to my friend's band's like, show that they're playing at the, the Moose of Hell yes. VFW. Hell yes, yeah. dude. The amount of VFW shows is like, I think they're like such a good learning tool where like it forces you to be so creative because yeah. the spaces are so boring. Yep. There's something oh, yeah. to me about like, like I love the House of Blues in Boston is my favorite place to shoot. Awesome. And it feels like easy mode whenever I'm there. It's like, yeah, you of course. just can't take a bad photo. Like there's these three giant tiers of people on the, like it's this enormous vertical venue. Absolutely. The lights are insane. Like you can't take a bad photo. And I go back to the VFW days, the Point Beach days where it's like, oh my God, you had to do so much work to get something yep. that was cool and something that other people also weren't taking a hundred yeah, times. Yeah, this room that has like maybe carpet and just like <laughs> wood walls and yep. just like no lighting or anything. I love the bands that would bring a rig into yeah. to, to venues like that. It's very awesome. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, it's always that challenge of like, I, I think you get the bug. I, get, I hate using that phrase because I, I know it's, has other connotations yep. to it. But like, I think there's a, yeah, you get this, this first fix of like, oh, it goes well once. You take one good photo and it's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is possible. There is room for growth here. Yep, absolutely. And then at that point, are you shooting most of your friends' bands? Like, I, yep, absolutely. Uh, I feel like I had a really hard time. Like, I didn't have friends' bands. So it was a lot of just showing up and like making friends. And I felt like, yep. like it sounds like your pipeline was a lot more natural. Like, you had band friends and went to them and kind of yeah. grew off of that. It was, yeah, it was like, uh, I remember like going to a show because that Life on the Sideline band was playing and that band was awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I just met, like met people like in the opening bands and stuff like that there at the Life at the Sideline show, and like that's how I'd end up like doing my first tours, just because like I became good friends with them, and I was just like, hey, like I will do merch and I'll do photos and I'll just take the tip jar. Yes, you don't gotta pay me. I'll even drive, <laughs> as everyone yep. does. That yeah, early beginning. Oh yeah, I have vivid memories of like my first business strategy at this point in time is like, yeah, I'm at all these shows. How do I mm -hmm. get my pictures into more people's hands? Yep. And so my first strategy is uh, business cards. So I print out like a huge stack of business cards. And my thing that. is like, I'm going to give a business card to every single person in this bitch. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that they won't look at it tonight. They might not look at it next week, 
But because I'm at the Webster at four times a week, like oh, eventually yeah. it's in by, someone's guitar box. Uh, by, yeah. Guitar case. And by the 10th time I give you a business card, eventually be like, okay, let me finally see what this kid's up to. Yep. Like, there's only so long you could ignore me if I'm this. Exactly. What is your early marketing strategy? How are you first getting your work out there? What is your first? Yeah. Hope uh, of growing what you're working. It was on? just like just taking it and just being like, Hey, I'm on tour with this band. Can I shoot your, your band for money? Okay. And a lot of the times, like, Somebody's going to like, and I'm so, I love when people say no and mm -hmm. like, they're super honest about it. Yeah. Uh, but I love it when, when people are just like, Hey, like I will give you merch or something like that, but yeah. we can't do money. And like back then, back in the day, I was like, yo, free stuff. That's enough. I love yeah. free stuff. You <laughs> still I mean? do. I'm still a sucker for a free yeah, shirt. Yeah. It was just like, I was going to buy that shirt regardless, but yep. now I can, you know, just get it for free. How long is it from like, it sounds like it was really quick from like first metal show to like first tour. Like how long is that window? Uh, I wanted to actually say, like, because I shot my first show in, like, December of 2016. Okay. Uh, and then I did my first tour in uh, in January of 2017. Damn. So about a yeah. year. And no, I, no. Like, oh, two months. Two months. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it sounds like a year, but no, it was it was two months. I'm laughing. Uh, I, historically, I've been terrible at my months. Like, somehow that's, I, I that's got fair. way too far into life without being able to put them in order. And I know my mom listens to every episode, and she's going to be awesome. laughing at me going, <laughs> there you go. Same old high school Peter, still not knowing his months. I, I do this. I mean, like, I can kind of, like, get years down. But, like, when yeah. it comes to, like, months, like, it's crazy. Like, I was just thinking about, like, I saw, was, like, reading, like, when this Justin Timberlake record came out in, like, Shout 2003. Out. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I remember 2003 when I was a kid listening to that in the summer. And I was like, oh, no, it came out in, like, the, in, like, November or something yep. like that. <laughs> I guess, yeah, in our kid memory, though, it's really easy to get those wires crossed. Yeah, and, like, yeah. we could listen to it the next summer and we were just behind the curve or Absolutely, whatever. Absolutely, yeah. Um, hell, yeah. So, about a year. That's crazy to like, get into it that quickly. Like, were you... I feel like I've would been terrified a year into this going on the road already yep. and like having that responsibility and it sounds like, yeah, maybe money was involved, but there's still like a, you still want to make people proud. Like you yeah. still want to go out and impress people. Like these are people who have trusted you to document their journey. Like there's still yeah. a, an intrinsic thing of like, Oh, I don't want to let them down. Like oh, what, yeah. what is that first time leaving for tour? Like, uh, it was a very, uh, I had to park my car in somebody's driveway and it was snowing like crazy. And mm -hmm. I was just so worried that like my car was going to get like destroyed by a plow or something like that. Uh, <laughs> Because then we we drove from Connecticut, Eastern Connecticut, yep. to New Hampshire in a snowstorm. Brilliant. <laughs> to, to the bungalow. Shout out the bungalow. <laughs> shout yeah, out the bungalow. 20 kids, you know, because nobody wants to drive in a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. And then in that snowstorm, down, I think, to like Adams, Massachusetts or something like that, in another snowstorm. Mm -hmm. And then down to Baltimore in another snowstorm. That was such an eye-opening part of getting yep. into shooting to me is how poorly attended most shows are. Yep. Like as a as a concert going fan, it's like you go to the shows that are sold out because most people like the same thing. Yep. And then I start getting to my camera and just going to whatever show is the closest mm -hmm. one to me that I can get access to. Yep. And very quickly I realized like, oh, most shows have 20 people at them. Like, and that is a, a whole new layer of challenge. Like we were talking about the House of Blues being perfect. Like, yep. how do you make a room look full when there's 20 people there? And yep. you learn to yeah, shoot from behind people's heads. And All the to, fish eye works yes. wonders. If you get a certain angle, people yep. will love you forever. And it's such a, yeah, an eye-opening challenge for me at the yep. time, especially. It was like, Fuck, I thought every show was sold out. I thought every concert had mm -hmm. hundreds of people there, wall to wall, full. Everyone knows yep. the words. And it's like, nope, most local shows are not at all. Bad. Absolutely. <laughs> was there, yeah, it sounded like you had like a local background though, so it wasn't as foreign to you to get into those yep. like 20 person shows. There was some, it, it some comfort. It felt like right, you know what I mean? I was just mm -hmm. like, oh, this band like draws this much in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I was like, in New Hampshire, they're going to draw like 20. Yeah. <laughs> and that makes sense. I was like, I was willing to like, go through that grind with them. Yep. Yep. And, and so it, I, it didn't really phase me, honestly. Because yeah. I feel like I've been to, like, a couple of VFW shows that were, like, why am I one of 12? Yes. Why is everyone, like, standing in the back so we're not, we're not up front? <laughs> yes. And, of course, with the camera, you're someone who stands out tremendously in that group oh. of 12 people. So it's very hard to be, yeah, just a fly on the wall the oh, way that I think. 2024, now I'm, now I'm one of 12 photographers. Yes. Yeah. Which is, again, it's, it's great awesome. to see it grow. Uh, yep. But yeah, it does introduce some other challenges. Yep. Yeah, having so many other people to work with and work mm -hmm. around where it's like, yeah, I hope everyone can thrive and get their shot. But like, I Absolutely. also want to get my shot in this. Yeah, mix. it gets to a point where like, if I go to a show now, I might have like a film camera in my bag or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'll like kind of read the room, you know what I mean? Especially yeah. if it's like a hardcore show or something like that, <laughs> yep. where it's just like everyone's there, everyone's friends who are better friends with them are up front. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take it easy. You know yes. what I mean? I don't want to be in anybody's way because like I'm, you know, like I tour and stuff like that and I play in music. I understand. Yep. So I'm just going to enjoy the show for what it is. I feel like I didn't understand that for a while. And yep. I'm sure I stepped on toes and I'm grateful to the folks who were forgiveness and showed me grace in those moments. Uh, because yeah, it is such a hard game to play of like, 
I got to do my thing, but it can't mm-hmm. be at the cost of someone else. And in these nope. venues where there's the stage is 10 feet wide, like there just isn't room for 10 of us up there. Like, yeah, no way. So All the like Webster fit. Underground, no <laughs> way. If there's one photographer on the tour, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> yeah. I swear the Webster Underground, though, I can like feel the floor shake. I yeah. swear like as I'm shooting the show, I've learned like like my spidey senses and my feet start to tingle. Yeah, you, like, know when oh, move. <laughs> you know when someone's going to kick you in the face for <laughs> yes. sure. Yeah, without even turning my eyes to him. It's like, oh, absolutely. Oh, this is going to get violent quick. I got to move. And absolutely. I'm sure I'm just predicting breakdowns as much as I am feeling the floor. But there is, yeah, a spidey sense you have to develop as you're getting into absolutely. it. Absolutely. And like, I feel like people that are not really spatially aware pick up the camera i feel so bad for him yes i was just like well they're gonna learn quickly but it's just like it's gonna be a hard learning curve it's, it's an expensive one for sure yes have you ever had any cameras break anything to that effect? thankfully no okay i've had like flashes knocked off but like yeah, <laughs> knock on wood this beautiful steamed <laughs> beautiful ikea uh, whatever Desk here. what's the fuck particle board <laughs> beautiful particle board uh, absolutely but yeah thankfully no- nothing yet you know knock on wood yep. uh i've had strings break and stuff like that i've had sure. like some like can't like you know uh, like pedals and stuff like that stop working. Okay. Uh, but thankfully, no camera gear, nothing yet. You know. I think my cameras are good. I had a flash explode on me one time. That's which, crazy. I still have no idea what the fuck happened. It was yeah. like right when I was meeting half hearted. So again, it's this uh-huh. thing of like, I am friends with them and I want to impress them and I want to seem like I know my shit, but I also internally know that I don't know my shit. And I have no yep. idea what I'm doing. And it's this like fake it till you make it game, which I am <laughs> a huge fan of playing. Uh, and so I'm helping them with glow down. I put my flash on top of the cab and like me and Jay pick up the cab yep. and then just. And then they're just like smoke coming out of it. And I assume one of the batteries like leaked and maybe hit something. Like something warm. And that's where, but it was one of those like, yeah, it just blew, blew apart into like more pieces than I could put back. That could have been like a one in a million type thing. hundred oh, you know percent. I mean? And thankfully it was a $30 flash, whatever. So like, thankfully, yeah. who cares at the end of the day? But it was more like the embarrassment of like trying to pretend like I know my shit. And then very obviously it's like, oh, I don't know my shit at all <laughs> because oh. of this evidence in front of everyone. I mean, I, I feel like my number one thing is like, thankfully nothing breaking, but like <laughs> I leave stuff everywhere. Oh my God. Interesting. Okay. Like uh, th- shout out to Jordan Burke. He's a photographer from sure. uh, the UK. Okay. Uh, we did the tour with uh, Cabal and Born Anew. Yep. That just happened in Flo Doman. Yep. And uh, he was like, can I borrow your flash? And I was like, absolutely. It's now in... Now I'm beautiful. <laughs> the UK. <with> them. <laughs> Have you ever been to the UK or just your flash? No, nope, it's it's Jordan's now for sure. It was a thirty dollar flash. I was like, he like you can use my backup. Obviously, yeah. like I just want like everyone to like you know work smoothly. And I just didn't even think to be like, hey, can I get that back? <laughs> Damn, yeah. I'm still not convinced that it's worth spending more than thirty dollars on a flash. Yeah, no. And I'm sure that there is an argument. I'm sure that if I sat down with like a a more expert photographer than yeah. I am, but like I'm convinced they all just make light and yeah, it's I'm, not worth the. I'm extra sure a B and H photo rep can tell you why. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, you know, like but, somebody who's like you know had thirty dollar, fifty dollar flashes. Yeah. Fifty dollars tops. That's all I spend For on it. Everything we're doing. Yeah, I think people. Uh, people love to say gear doesn't matter, and I that irks me because it's like, mm. no, it does matter. That's why we've all spent so much money on our gear. Absolutely. I understand the sentiment of like, you can give an expert an iPhone and give an expert or a beginner a red camera, and like the iPhone's still gonna be the better product. But like, yep. in the context of a flash, it's like, no, I think gear really doesn't matter there. Like, yeah. I really do believe that the $30 flash yeah, I mean, is like, the it's same. the same with a guitar. Like, there's yeah. certain guitar pedals, like the cheap, like the best tuner is a boss tuner. Yep. You know, I'll never switch off of that. <laughs> but like, you know, like, same thing with like, you know, a cheap flash is best. Yeah. But like, obviously, you want that on like a EOS R or something like that, R5. Yep. Like, yeah. the, the image quality is gonna be night and day. You yeah. know what I mean? Is that where you've invested more of like your your money is into the camera body versus like music gear? Like where do you feel like has consumed most of your output there? Oh, music gear, hundred percent. Interesting. Okay. In Facebook Marketplace, oh, and you can I shout out Tom from Crush and Robinwood. Uh, me and him would just like be back and forth, like oh I found this and stuff. Like even uh, Corey from Boundaries, like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just always like I'll text someone like hey found this in Rhode Island. It's like a, a three hundred dollar Ibanez. That's like a eight hundred dollar guitar, and then they I love. <laughs> they text me driving out to get it. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's the same thing with Tom. Tom would be like, hey, I'm driving to Maine to pick up this like soft tech amp or something like that. Interesting. So these sound like they're more like vintage items. Is, yeah. that, is that accurate that you're more in like a, yeah, the classics of it more so yeah. than the cutting edge of technology? Absolutely. With a, with my camera though, I feel like I gotten like the focal points of what I like to shoot. Yeah. And I feel like the only thing I can do is dump more money into like the Red Hood. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the Canon L lens. So, yes. Uh, which I would love to do at some point. Um, and I need to get, you know, our lenses for sure. An for interesting mount. game to me to play, uh, is when to spend money on these things. And exactly. I think it's an interesting thing. To, and the, the story I've told in here a couple of times, so I'll tell the abbreviated version. But a while ago I met a guy who was filming on a red camera and this yep. was like me and him were both in our first year of shooting. 
And his, his line to me was like, it's like getting a face tattoo. Like once you get a face tattoo, you're a rapper and you have to be a rapper your whole Interesting. life because you have your face tattoo. Oh. And he kind of used the 50, 100 grand, whatever the fuck money he'd gone into debt for on this camera yep. with a similar thing of like, now that I have this thing, I am this guy. And it yeah. struck me as like, I don't know if I agree with it, but if it worked, he's made way more money than I have. Well, well I will say though, if somebody offered to like shoot a set that I was playing and I saw that they had a red camera, I'd be like, all right. Hundred, exactly. Right, yeah, you kind of sold me, you know. Yes, like, you you get your foot in the door. You can also rent it out to other people and make absolutely. passive income off yep. it, which is something that I haven't begun to touch, but is another yeah stream of revenue absolutely. here to make money off of. And I always think back to him because it's like the most extreme example of when to spend money, but it's still the game of like, yeah, when do you go from the whatever like the fifty millimeter lens can be the two hundred fifty dollar version or the yep. two thousand mm -hmm. dollar version, and when yep. do you make that jump and is that jump ever worth making? And I'm always debating this, and it's yeah, an interesting yep. thought experiment. Straight up, like time. I think some of the best fish eyes are like the what is it like the Sam Yang or something? Like yep. that. The, yep. Those things are awesome. Like there's no like autofocus, but yep. like you don't really need it when super wide. Yeah, and if if your first like first gig or like first show or something like that, it's yeah. perfect. Yes, and especially if you're super up close and. And especially it's like spend the, the 200 bucks you save, spend it on tickets, spend it on yep. gas, spend it on parking. Like absolutely get like the experience of being at the place is way more valuable than having the tools to do it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and I think, I assume your experience is the same where for me, the challenge at the beginning was like, uh, we talked, uh, one of the, you said uh, something earlier and I told mm -hmm. you there was 10 things I wanted to touch on. And one of them was the financial part of it of like, yeah, this thing's expensive and it's important to get your foot in the door first. And it's mm -hmm. more important to get your, like your network growing, get the experience and like, yep it's not worth charging a premium price at first. And it's like, there is the, it's the flip side there is like, we don't want to undercut our peers, but it's like yeah. doing a $10. My first music video is $40. And it's Respect. like, I'm sure that that pissed off someone who wanted yep. to make their whatever, a couple hundred bucks off yep. it. But to me, it's like, I need to do more music videos. The only yeah. way to do this thing is to do more of them. And if I'm doing them for 40 bucks and who can say no to that? I mean, that's just like covering gas. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and the rest of yeah. it is just like a hobby. You know? Yes. And it, but to, I, I think that is something that I wish more people understood of like, don't come in and charge what other people are charging because yeah, no you don't way. have the resume for it. And mm -hmm. it's more important to get your foot in the door and grow. And I feel like I'm still playing that game to some degree of like, I would like to believe that I'm giving people the best price that I can give them. Yep. And it's some version of like, I, I value your money. I value what you've done to earn the money and I don't mm -hmm. want to take it and be greedy. Yep. But it's also like, I am aware that I'm still, I started in 2016 ish as well. Yep. So I'm yeah. Eight years in, I'm aware that eight years is still nothing. Like I put mm -hmm. this in the context of like, elementary school it's like i'm an eighth grader right now yep like for all how smart i think i am like there's still gonna be a lot of learning in high school and then college and then post-grad there's yep. a lot between me and where i think i can be yeah and then you get all the people that like documented warp tour and stuff like that they, every single year and so mm -hmm. you're just like you know you know yes and those yep. people who were doing it every single day it's like that is the key and yep. i i think i try and remind myself and the podcast has been another iteration of that of like I don't know what a good podcast is. I don't know what the best version of this is. Yep. I know I have to do it every week to find that out. Absolutely. And it is way more important to do it every week. We were talking about the set before. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I would love to green screen this background. I'd love to be able to create something that is completely unique and above and beyond. But it's like, I'll get there when I get there. It's way more important to just be here and do the thing. Yep. And I'll figure out what's good later. But yeah, and I'm about a year into this. Like, I'm never going to have where I want to be because that's not what a year does. It's not what a year, year experience is. Well, I mean, like you work in like the creative field. So mm -hmm. like, I feel like... You you got to be kind of a perfectionist at that point. Yeah. So, I mean, like, to find a point where you're satisfied, I don't think is, like, good enough. You know what I mean? Yes. So and there is you're no always striving for what's next. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I like the idea. Uh, there's some quote I have on the wall up there, and it's just that no artist is ever satisfied. Like, mm -hmm. your job is to do the thing. It's not your job to determine if it's good. It's not mm -hmm. your determine what it's worth. Like, your job is just to do the thing and keep doing the thing. And those questions will get answered by other people over yep. time. And Absolutely. It's, it's been a really valuable reminder to me of, like, yeah, it's not my job to determine if I'm good at this. My yep. job is just to, to do keep it. doing it and keep making sure I'm enjoy doing it and follow the things that I'm enjoy doing. And like mm -hmm. the rest will come. And if it doesn't, then I did it my way and I had fun. Absolutely. Uh, or I think there's a fear of people getting stuck in this like, yeah, this thing that they like doing, they're good at doing, but they don't love doing it. They don't want to yeah. keep doing it. It's yeah. just what they do. Yeah. And that has always struck as like, no, this is a fun world. That becomes work. You know yeah. what I mean? Work for no pay. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? <laughs> yes. Well, we've all done it plenty of times. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you should do it, you know, yeah. if you're especially exploring new avenues, but just yeah. like there's got to be something fulfilling to you at yes. the end of the day. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And if e it's even like, if it's not money, you know, if it's just like I got an experience out of this or just like mm -hmm. I made new connections, yep. I even made new friends out of this. Yep. It's you got to get something out of it. Or even, yeah, like something you see people. valuable. Yes. I think is, I think like minded people is the most valuable thing I've taken away from this. Where oh, I think absolutely. I, 
I am bad at sitting still and not that I can't sit on a couch, but it's that I crave being in motion. I crave progress. I mm-hmm. crave learning and moving forward in my life. And I think that is the, the tie that it unites our little metal scene of like, yep. we are such a unique niche where it's like, I think, I think with a rapper, there's the illusion of like, oh, I'll just get the nice clothes and then I look like the guy and that yeah. snowballs it. And I just don't think we have that. I think our whole scene is built off this like DIY, figure it out mentality yep, absolutely. that I resonate so much with so many people. Uh, and I, yeah, I think that's been the most comforting part of getting into this is like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely crazy. I'm definitely out of couple screws loose, mm-hmm. but at least other people have those same screws loose as well. Yeah. 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 There's no like product to really be marketed, you know, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, I guess like, you know, all, you know, this, this vocalist is so handsome. Like he's got a bunch of like followers on Instagram sure. and stuff like that. Sure. But that's not like a product. Like that is the person at it, the end of the day. That's the person making Yes. Uh, the art and stuff like that. So I feel like a lot of like pop stars and stuff like that are like products at the end of the day. Cause like mm-hmm. they have a team working for them to push said product. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. But, but the ones yeah. that are super down to earth are like the ones that kind of stick out. You know what I mean? Yes. This is where someone, this is where Taylor Swift specifically is so fascinating to me of like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, take early from music, not my cup of tea, but yeah. who cares? It's everyone else's cup of tea. So I'm, I'm the wrong person there. We're like, it's all uh, good. I don't love coffee, but I've accepted that everyone else likes coffee so much that I am wrong. I can see something I can respect in it. (laughs) Yes. And with Taylor Swift, what fascinates me is like, she is presented as being so kind and down to earth. And I believe those things to be true. Mm Because what the fuck do I know? But I don't believe you can be those things with 80,000 people coming to see you every night for thousands of dollars a ticket. Mm -hmm. And I'm really fascinated by how you, and I think there's something beautiful in our scene where it's like, bring me the horizon and a day to remember like the few that get to that terminal velocity or exit velocity rather. But for most of us, it's like, this is not a big enough world to ever really have those problems. Yeah. Uh, And I, it's a fascinating thing to me of like, yeah, how do you stay human when there's that many people giving you that much love and attention Mm -hmm. and how can you even begin to be human? And like, we, we criticize people at her tier for becoming yeah products. And it's like, yep. I I don't know what else you would be at that point. How do you not become that? Yeah. I mean, like at, at like the a day to remember and like bring me point. Like, I feel like the people that like grew up in like the VFW halls and stuff like mm-hmm. that, they get to a certain point and they're like, I have to give back. I have to do something. Yeah. You know, and the like open, open a coffee shop or something like that. But even then, like the, the mentality of like, I have to work with this and I have to like not look a gift horse in the mouth with it. Yeah. Is, is such an awesome thing to have. Cause a lot of people don't get it. A lot of people just want to blow up and then collect Mm-hmm. and get the followers and all that, but they don't want to deal with what comes with it. So. Yes. And I, uh, the other piece of wisdom that I've heard here is that like you can, uh, in ultimately that's insecurity, right? It's a desire to mm-hmm. want to be more liked, more respected, yep. like yourself more. Like there's some, some insecurity that we are trying to qu- solve with this thing. And yep. I guess for me, it's, yeah, I want to assert that I am smart and capable and able to do these things. And the only way I know how to do that is to keep doing these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think in the fuck, where's I going with that? I have no idea. Um, with all these insecurities we're trying to conquer. Um, Oh, the idea that you can get to the size and like you can just end up being Taylor Swift and still not being fulfilled. And Mm -hmm. then what? And that's been an interesting thing to me of like, make sure that I'm fulfilled now because there is no amount of dollars in a budget that is going to fulfill me. There's no project that I will land that will fulfill me. It's Mm -hmm. like, okay, make sure that this is built on a hearty foundation because otherwise you just end up in this room of other people and you're still looking at them going like, well, I don't belong to be here. Yeah. And we start to get into the imposter syndrome and all those other things that we love to talk about. And Yeah, true. Yeah, and I, I really try to work on like making sure that I'm yeah locked in and grat- grat- feeling gratitude for what I have now and appreciating of like, yeah, I think when I got into this, there was some sense of like, once Bring Me the Horizon hires me, I'll be happy. Things mm-hmm. will be great. And it's like, oh no, that's just not it. Like I, I haven't been hired by them, but I've been yep. hired higher up the ladder than I thought I would have been. Yep. And it still doesn't do it. Like there's a, yeah, a part of me that still has to be like happy and satisfied with what I'm doing because it can't come from anywhere else. Absolutely. Uh, I also don't want too much at once. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I feel my first tour back from COVID was with Boundaries and Spite and Vatican and all that. And so like, it was like my first full US just back and I just felt like super just like, whoa, like yes. felt like a little imposter syndrome. feel mm-hmm. like I, I don't feel like I'm. I, I, I fully belong to this, but it was, I had such an awesome time. It was like something I'm going to remember forever. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Is it, it was, also like a fake it till you make it kind of thing? Not really because okay. like I, I could do the work, you know yeah. what I mean? But I just felt like this was like a two years and this was a, this is a logical step. Like, I feel like I missed something right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, it was just like such an unreal experience, but like, just like the whole like imposter syndrome thing there. Like at, there was times there where I was just like across the country, like, Oh, you know, I did this by, you know, becoming friends with people mm-hmm. and like, you know, hopping in a van for free and then eventually <laughs> did this. But 
How did yeah. you like conquer that? Like when you're at some point, I'm making up a city, but if you're in Sacramento and going, yep. I don't belong here. How are you finding peace in that moment? What was the internal monologue in your bunk that helped you like calm down and feel like you belong? Oh, there? just like knowing that I'm going to go in and it's just going to be like a, a room full of like-minded people, people that, you know, uh, I, I love that Vatican band so much. Mm -hmm. And just to like, be like, you know, this, this feels nice to be like touring with bands that I actually want to like yes. listen to every single night. And like, that's like, at the end of the day, it's like, I like to get paid from stuff, but like, but like I have like a, like a list of bands I want to shoot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when I, when I got to shoot Silverstein for the first time, I was like, yo, let's go. Hell yes. Like I was like, I don't, I don't want to get paid. I just want like, I love a laminate. Yep. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's Sucker such a fulfilling, a laminate. such yeah. a fulfilling thing. A laminate, a sticky or yep. whatever. Uh, a lot of, ooh, I'm going to kick this a bunch. Please do. Uh, <laughs> I beg you to kick it. I felt, uh, where was I going with this? Uh, bands, uh, manifest some shit. Yep. Who's on your list that you haven't shot now? Who is next? Oh, on manifest some stuff. Yeah. yeah give I me mean, one. Uh, putting on the spot here. Yeah. Putting sorry. me on the spot is so crazy. I mean, like I was going to say Hawthorne Heights cause they're uh, playing around here or something like that. Okay. I already shot Hawthorne Heights though. Okay. Um, I mean like your, your senses fails and sure. stuff like that. Uh, I've shot Gideon before, but yeah. like, Gideon put out a monster record with Randy. Yeah. And I would love to shoot that band now that they're playing to giant rooms. Yep. Stuff is, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Is Silverstein the one that stands out to you as Mecca where I, I look back and I did get to shoot Good Charlotte on their comeback tour. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I talked about growing up on oh, the Oh my Four Year Strong. Four Year well, Strong. How did I not mention Four Year Strong? Four <laughs> okay. Year Strong and like Newfound Glory are like two of my favorite bands okay. ever. And like I've shot Four Year Strong at an acoustic show before, but like, you know, mm -hmm. The God. holiday show, like the holiday shows, would be sick. Yeah. If I ever got to tour with that band, I would be like, "Where do I go from here?" <laughs> there, yeah, nowhere left to go from there. Like I could tour with Metallica after this and just be like, <laughs> "Still tour the Four Year Strong." Though. That's sick. Yeah. It's funny how we have those like yeah personal milestones that yeah transcend numbers yeah. and all the other streaming numbers that people people should be fascinated. Like by. even now, like I've like toured and like played shows with like bands I respect. And like, like, like a mm -hmm. lot and like love certain records and stuff like that. But I'm just like still tour with boundaries. That's sick. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. they are crushing it right now. It's been Absolutely. so sick to watch them just explode at, yep. a, at such an unbelievable rate. And of course, yeah, now they're out with the Bear Tooth store. Yep, the hard work and straight up finally paying off. It is. Uh, I know you were also working at the Webster for a while. And I'm curious oh, of yeah. like how this influenced, like, I think that, yeah, for me going to shows like taught me so much about shows. And yep. I feel like working at the Webster and kind of being in the backseat mm -hmm. for so many shows. And I assume some of them were shows you liked yep. and some of them, <laughs> maybe not as much. Oh my God. Like I got to, I got spoiled because like, I get to see stuff like, you know, like action Bronson. Mm -hmm. I get to see like, uh, who else just came through? Devil Wars Prada came by and stuff. Sure. Like, uh, the club nights are like the ones where it's just like, there's no talent. It's just like the local DJ and everyone's mm -hmm. just like partying and getting fucked up. Yep. Those are the ones I'm just like, ah, you know, I'm here to do a job. You know, I'm here to make people happy. This is like, this is work. Yep. But like when it's like, when we came as Romans in a mirror play and stuff like that, it's like, this doesn't feel like work, you know, yeah. just like, it feels like, uh, you know, like I'm doing this thing in the background while I'm waiting for the band to like set up or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm helping this person out, you know? Did that, like, influence or affect how you then, like, went out and shot? Like, was did you gain anything from being in the, a fly on the wall of so many concerts? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just, like, uh, how to, like, you know, certain crowd moments and stuff like that. Like, I haven't been a showgoer in so long. Yeah. And just, like, people get so stoked at certain things. And I love that. I always got to think of being like, okay, this is the band's, like, biggest part this is sing along. This is the time to get it wide and get everyone pointing fingers at the, mm -hmm. at the guy. You know, just that really, was yeah, yeah. That was always my tactic. Where yeah, yeah. As I'm getting into shows and yeah, you go to some shows that again, some bands you like and some bands not so much. Yeah. And my strategy was always like yeah, find the person who's having the best night of their life and go okay, what do they want to see? How Absolutely. do I do this for them? Because it's not doing it for me. That's that's like I as, can live through them as yeah. good as like the the artist like finding your work and like yeah. sharing it and stuff like is like even somebody just like following you and just like tagging you just like oh had an amazing night to shout out to this photographer like that feels awesome yeah because yeah. like not only like okay like the band is getting like free promotion or whatever or like a band's getting promotion they paid for but when somebody's like I had like the best night of my life and I saw my favorite band this person captured it here's me singing yep that's a good feeling absolutely I'm a I'm a big fan of time capsules and yep, uh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I've again told the story on here a couple times, so I'll give the abridged version. But it's the my grandfather was in World War II, and so I yep. inherited his journal from that. And I recently right like transcribed it and gave it to my family as a gift. So that in the okay, yeah. in the book that we ended up printing, there's a photo of like his writing and then a transcription of it because his yep. his writing was not not easy to read. I mean, I'm the same group, same boat, you know same I mean? here. But it was 
I meant that I got to sit with my grandfather at 18 years old uh-huh. and he is going to world war two. He's in the air force. He's yep. doing all the things that are required of a person at that time. Mm-hmm. And like when I got to know my grandfather, he was 80 or something, right? Like yep. he was too old to be accessible to me as a young kid. Okay. But to connect with him as an 18 year old, it's like, Oh fuck, this is a really powerful thing to like, yeah, this is inner monologue that I'm hanging yeah, out. Absolutely. With. And that really inspired this thing of like, Oh, documenting stuff is really cool. It's really yeah. powerful that we get to take photos of these shows of these people in the crowd. And it's like, we don't really know who these people are, when they're, where they're going, or where these yeah. photos will go. Yeah, but for sure. In twenty years, someone's going to look back at one of our photos. I don't know which one. I don't know from which yeah. show. But someone's going to look back at one of them and go, "Fuck, that was the best day of my life," or some version of that. That's an incredible way to look at and it. And it's like, damn, that's a, a that's real a powerful, powerful thing that we get to do. Where yeah. we are, yes, we're spoiled to be at concerts so much. Yeah. But for most people, concerts are a once a year thing mm-hmm. or some version of that. And like to be able to cement that in time for them is like. Hell yes. I'm really glad to get to do that for someone. And yeah, it feels absolutely. as good of a thing as we could do for anyone. That's a good uh, way to look at it. I mean, I, I feel like I haven't looked at it like that. I feel like I see a show and I'm just like, all right, like these are the lights I'm going to mm-hmm. mess with later. Yes. You know what I mean? Or like I have to get the shot of this person jumping. Yes. Uh, I guess I never really saw it as like, you know, something deeper for, you know, the audience goer. And like they outnumber you. 100%. So like the chance they're going to have like a meaningful experience at this yeah. is very high. 100%. And yep. I also like to keep in mind that like, the band on stage, I, I look at them like superheroes. Like when yeah. they're on stage, they are larger than life. They're bigger than human. Mm-hmm. I know some of them aren't feeling that way. I know oh, some of them are coming off of a tour bus where they got into an argument with someone where yep. there's personal stuff going on at home that they just, they, yeah, can't yep, deal absolutely. with because they're somewhere. And it's like, if I can take a photo of you that makes you feel good in that moment where nothing else feels good, like that's worth something too. It's uh, a good feeling. And, yeah, I think I... It motivates me to know that I'm doing this. It's not just selfish. I think where mm-hmm. maybe I guess what I'm getting at is that when I got into this, it felt gluttonous. It was like, I get to yeah. do all these cool things, but like, I don't want to just do it for me. That's very selfish. Like, yeah. how do I, how do I justify that this is for bigger, bigger than me? I mean, yeah, I see that. That's, that's a very, like, that's an awesome way to look at it, yeah. honestly. Uh, and certainly <laughs> not in all my moments do I have that mentality. I, I guess I, I feel like I have to fight for that mentality sometimes. Yeah. Like, cause I feel like when I look into it deep enough, it's like, I, that's what I want to feel. Like, that's what I want to make people feel. Yep. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is documenting. Yeah. And, it, uh, and no matter how somebody feels about it, and this is up to them. Definitely when the room is hot and sweaty and smelly, it's way easier to get caught on those. Yeah, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm so tired. I'm yeah, so hungry. Yeah, my I'm so feet thirsty. hurt. I want to go to bed. All of these things to add up. And yeah, in those moments, I try and go back to like, there's someone in here who needs whatever I am doing. And mm-hmm. at that point, it is now larger than me. And it's, yeah, it gives me that extra oomph mm-hmm. <laughs> to stay in the hot and sweaty room and yeah, deal absolutely. with the people who need deodorant in the shower. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's plenty of them. Oh, there's so many. Um, hell yes, I'm jumping back in history here. Yes. Uh, so, uh, camera stuff starts to get going. We start touring as well. Yep. Uh, at what point does it start to become like like a full time? Not necessarily full time, but like when does it start to become like all encompassing? Like it sounds like it was like a, a hobby that you were pursuing, and yep. then slowly grows into something where it's like, oh no, this is home for me. Yeah. Uh, and then you start joining bands as a result of it. Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. seems like yeah, all grows. Where does that growth happen from? a small time hobby to like, Oh no, this is now my life. This is my reality, my community, my peers. A lot of it helps from like, just like shout out to the Massachusetts like scene because like made a lot of friends through that. And I like, I started just like cold, you know, messaging bands and stuff like that. One of those bands was this band called regime. Shout out, shout out regime, shout out Nathan. Yep. Uh, and I toured with that band a ton and I just met a lot of people through them. I, I learned a lot. I'm just about touring. That's how I got like my footwork in and stuff like that. Got my foot in the door a little bit like that. That's when it became like more than just like one tour, like a year. It became Mm -hmm. like, oh, I might do two tours this year because I met this other band on this tour and doing a music video for this band. Like Somewhere to Call Home really helped me out with that too. That was, they were the last band I toured with when the world shut down. Yep. Yep. Somewhere to Call Home and Revenant tour that never happened. Very very crazy, very unfortunate, but... Tragic. And I also, I have a Sinking Vessels production yes. here. Uh, that's my, I think, my timeline here, if it's correct. Yes. And correct me if I'm not. Uh, I think that runs from 2016 to 2020. So I yep. assume that that is, yeah, shut down by the pandemic. And yeah. it's kind of a, then there's a moment of kind of reassessing afterwards. Is yeah. that fair? There was, a, there was like a whole, like, I'm going to open up a, like, get an LLC for this. Mm-hmm. And it, it is something where it's like, you know, I look back and like, it, it is like a nice catalog of everything I've done mm-hmm. to a certain point. But then I was like... It is so much easier to market myself as myself yes. than an Instagram account yep. or a Facebook account. You know? Does it feel better to you? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I have the same thing where it's like yeah. I – even branding the show was so hard for me because like I just want to be Peter. Like the idea yep. of being 
eh, whatever, blah, 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 photography. It was mm-hmm. just like, just so not me where it's like, I just, I don't want to market. I don't want to be anything other than what I am. And awesome. I want to be me to the most, to the umpteenth degree of what yeah. I could be. It's easier to market yourself because you know yourself, you know? Uh, yes. And it, it feels genuine where I yeah. think is the other piece of that, that I struggled with a lot of like, I'm not good at marketing myself because I don't want to sell myself. I just mm-hmm. want to be me and you're going to like it. Great. Yep. And if you're not, then don't. And I think in the context of Sinking Vessels production, it, yeah. it challenges. You have to do that. You have to yeah. sell it and you have to be bigger than you. And it, yeah, to me, takes away some of the, the personality that I find yeah. so valuable in this whole process. I had a lot of people think it was a team. Yes. So that was another, huge that was another hurdle. But, but thank you. <laughs> uh, a lot of people thought it was a team. So that was a hurdle to get over. And I had a yeah. bunch of people like hit it up to like, because like I booked a couple shows okay. back in the day too. And I would do it under that, under singling vessels. Okay. Uh, and a lot of people would hit it up, be like, hey, can you book this? And it was just too much to like, yeah. Constantly say, hey, it's just me. No, I can't do this. I'm sorry. Interesting. And then, uh, you've done a little bit of everything along the way. It was an awesome, yeah. uh, like creative endeavor. Yep. Even just to like come up with like the logo with my friend, like a friend of mine who just like is an illustrator did yep. that. My friend Johnny did that. And it just, it was an awesome like little creative endeavor that I'm like f- proud of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to put it behind me because it's just, it's way too much to handle now. I'd rather just go by myself. Yep. And when bands tag it that I photograph <laughs> nowadays, I'm just like, that's awesome. Yeah. It's cool that it still exists. Cool Absolutely. that it's out there. But yeah. I'm just nice like, they're a real one that they remember, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Is there so then the future is is Hunter? It yes. seems like that is the more that is where you're comfortable now moving yeah. forward. Uh, what is like the why is that better to you? Why does that feel better? Why does that work better for you? Where I it, think uh, it's the same for me, but yeah, I'm curious on your Yeah, I feel like you know more people are gonna like it. Be like, oh, this person introduced himself as himself. This is yeah, this is what you're gonna get. Yep, uh, and then just like, oh, here's my business card with a logo on it. Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, like when you when you market something as a like a, a brand or something like that, yeah, or like a team. Uh, I feel like it's going to like intimidate more people because they're going to be like, oh, there's going to be way more like hoops to jump through to, mm-hmm. to get a hold of the person we want to talk to. Yes. I also think yeah. our world is like anti-corporation in a way where it's like, I think in, was, a, in a sense, if I was shooting weddings, I think I might explore a formal business name and really try yeah, and formalize exactly. things. And I think a wedding would respond well to that. I think they would want, uh, they would want to believe that sinking vessels is yeah. 10 people. Sinking there, there was a, that was another avenue I was trying to go down to. I, I shot a wedding or two. Okay. Uh, and that was just another thing where it was like, I, I kind of want to market it as myself. Cause I know weddings are where the money is. Mm-hmm. That and, is, yes, that is always what I've heard. Uh, how did you, I, how did you feel about shooting weddings? Was it a good fit for you? Uh, I feel like I can do it a lot better with a lot more confidence now. But back in the okay. day, I was just like, oh, like, you know, it wasn't even like the budget wasn't huge for it anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it wasn't like a whole like retreat for everybody, the whole family. Yeah. It was just like, oh, you know, it's a, it's small at our church. You know what gotcha. I mean? Yeah, yeah, Come yeah, out. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Was yep. there any other? So we did weddings. We booked shows. Yes. <laughs> we did concerts in there. Like anything yep. else I'm missing under the umbrella of no, that, Vessel? That sounds, that sounds real. Like sometimes I would do like little art videos and stuff like that, but I would just go through it. Um, I did like the music videos and stuff like that. I put out a couple EPs through it. Damn. Like not, yeah. not as like a label, but it was like we need a lyric video or we need like um just a video to put on YouTube back before like District Kid did everything. Yep. And I would I did it for like my friends in Northern Life and Hell yeah. Uh, shout out Underthrow because their first EP I put out and they were like, Can you please just <laughs> put it away? So I was like, I got you. <laughs> just unlisted it. So I'm, now I'm the only person that can listen to it. That's, what's the screlly cut of the Wu Tang album? Yeah, like, yeah. But <laughs> seriously, yeah, fifty grand, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> one day someone will pay for it. Yep, I'm down. <laughs> that rules. Okay, damn. That's I didn't realize how diverse that platform was and how much yeah. you had going on under that umbrella. It's a lot. A lot of like I got to think back to. Yeah, because it was just like so much in like so little time. Yes, and then the yeah pandemic does its thing and crushes yep. a lot of momentum. Yep. Uh, for me, I, I assume this was similar for you that there's a real soul searching moment in there of like, mm-hmm. is this whole industry dead? And if it is, then what? And then there was a moment of like, okay. If, if, if entertainment comes back, you yep. know, it's of course a huge if for some part of that. And then it's like, okay, well, and when it does come back, then what, where do I fit into this thing? Now that I've had time to sit back and digest and yep. like, I look at 2016 to 2020 as like such a whirlwind where like I was just in motion a hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time that I had to stop and go like, okay, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> what yep. do I want to happen? Where am I hoping this thing goes? Uh, was that a similar challenge for you then to kind yeah. of recalibrate as you come out of it? Oh, yeah, because like 2016 to 2020 was just like, I need to make friends with all these little bands and stuff mm-hmm. like that because like eventually somebody's going to get me on, you know, yes. get me on a big tour or something like that. Uh, but yeah. like actually back then, like my my goal was to like not even tour with like a huge band, but to tour with like a like a nationwide touring band, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Then, of course, you come out of the pandemic with a nationwide tour with yep. Boundaries and Spite, yep. which is a, a huge, yeah, rejuvenation, I think, yeah. uh, to get a little spark going after the Yeah, after that was crazy. Wall. That's nuts. And then and then from there, the things just keep growing. Just been yep. touring ever since. Absolutely. Been touring, been, uh, you know, then joined Thus Spoke Zarathustra after being in Robin Wood and Crush. Hell yes. And uh, Thus Spoke Zarathustra is like, it's more of like, we're, we're going to like grind and tour and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Where like like Crush and Robin was just like let's just make music and mm-hmm. I think that's awesome and I'm I I support them 100 percent but it is just like I want to I want to sleep in a Planet Fitness <laughs> do all lot. the fun stuff yeah. yeah and that is the game plan moving I want to feel bad you know what I mean <laughs> yep eat like dog shit for too oh, long so sleep excited without comfort for too long yeah hell yes uh tours coming up yeah i think we touched on it in the five minutes of yep. forgotten podcast yeah, yeah, start yeah. Of this. um so yes from july what is it like i think the 29th to august 6th 29th to 6th and then we have a, a headliner in hell orlando yes. at the spot hell yes that rules yes. okay yep. uh how does it feel to then be going out is it yeah i assume not the first run with them but yeah how does it feel to be going back out getting ready for it's all it's a long time coming we're all so excited yeah yeah, we've all been waiting for this for we have we have some other stuff coming this year that is like pretty fulfilling. Hell yeah, pretty fulfilling. I have like a couple of years coming in the making. Hell yeah, finally get to use my passport. Hell yeah, ex- very excited. Hell yeah, uh, go get that flashback. Oh my god, I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, but it's it's we've just been itching to get on the road. We just love turning our brains off and then that rules. driving six hours a night. That rules. What is the number one thing you're looking forward to in that in that week of travel? Number one thing I'm looking forward to is probably. It's gonna sound so just shallow, but probably just like Jets Pizza. Yeah. Just just like the Detro- <laughs> Jets Pizza. I, oh, it's a Det- I'm sorry. <laughs> it is a deep dish Detroit chain. Okay. It's just it's it's junk food. It's terrible for you, but it's so but, good. It's yeah. it's some like even like I know this is disgraceful coming from <laughs> Connecticut. I'm from Eastern Connecticut, so okay. it's not I'm not even used to like a pizza and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love like a deep dish. Like this is almost like a pastry type That's deal. Shit. Okay. And I love Chicago and Detroit so much. So just like being there is awesome. Getting to play there, playing the Sanctuary, mm-hmm. awesome venue. Big fan. I would love. I've never made out the Chain Reaction, but there's yeah, oh. a couple of these around the country. It's like yeah, yeah, I would love to go there. And I know Chain Reaction is always billed as being like underwhelming once yep. you're finally there because it's in a strip mall, I think, or something. Yep. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, very underwhelming spot that seems like a, a mecca because we saw. Yeah so many photos and videos of it back oh, in the day oh my but. god my first time there i was like i have to stage dive <laughs> i stage drive and like i hit a kid in the face and i felt real bad but i was like this is my first time in chain reaction like, i have to do it yeah and sanctuary sounds like it's a similar thing for you where there's just a, a special tie to it I, I went there on the uh like the born anew flow omen okay. cabal tour and it was oh, yes. just like i i felt awesome like the crew there was really nice it's got a nice vibe to it very similar to like kind of like the webster in a mm-hmm. sense where it's like that capacity yeah but it's just like I feel like that that's their their Webster right now, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Like I see like a bunch of like stuff on the wall of just like legendary bands coming through. Hell yes. Do you have any preference of being on the road like as a performer versus like as a content person? Uh, I feel like as a performer, like I'm gonna be shouting no matter what, so I don't really care if I'm like if I'm like catered to or something like that. But like when I do content, it's like I need to have like all these amenities, like I need a, a mm-hmm. charger and stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like even worse than. When I tour with, with Thus Spoke, because it's just like, I'm going to set up and play the set a bunch and jump around and then eat a bunch of terrible food <laughs> and drink a bunch of coffee. And then like on the road, like doing content, it's like, oh, if we walk down here, like I got to take like B-roll and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just like cute little pictures of us at the coffee shop. Yeah. Because it's all about making content. They need something to post. Yes. Or like I have to edit this video. And I'm not saying like that's all, oh, this is hard work. This is like all, oh, this is backbreaking sure. labor. But sure. it's just like, it can... Day 15 of that can kind of just be like Definitely. You know, brain rot. I, I joke that it's like, I only have so many good ideas. And yep. it's like by the 15th day, it's like, I'm just out of good ideas. And yep. I'm just doing things that are ideas, but that's different than being like, oh, i being compelled to do something. You're just kind of doing it because it needs to be done. And there's Oh, a, yeah. And you're like, oh, we're going to the city on this day. Let's go. And you go and it's raining. Yes. So you can't even get like the shot you wanted to <laughs> yeah. or just like the perfect promo or something like that. Interesting. I was expecting the opposite. I was expecting you to say that like when you're on the band, there's the pressure of selling tickets and all these other, yeah, selling merch and all the financial overhead burdens that come with it. Um, and with content, I, I imagine those are lesser burdens. And it's interesting to hear, yeah, that your perspective is the opposite there. Yeah. So far with Thus Spoke, like I've done like, since I've joined, I've done some like like merch designs and stuff like that. Hell so yes. right now it's being like, oh, this merch design I make, uh, like hope nobody hates it. <laughs> yep. uh, we did like this stupid like last minute like uh, Black Ops 2 <laughs> shirt. Perfect. And, and it just like sold like nothing the first day of the Wrist Meat Razor tour. And I was like, this is a good feeling. Hell yes. Yeah. That, that must also be cool. Uh, 
I'm forgetting. I've had this conversation on here before. Yep. Just to like see people in the shirt, and it's like they don't yep. know you made it. Yeah. But there must be something really cool about the the anonymity of that, where it's like when you're on yep. stage, there's a very direct uh, direct relationship between the fan and the person. Yep. And you know each other. And I think to see someone walk in the venue wearing your shirt would be a really cool. Like, oh, they don't know I did that. But it's oh, on the float on board a new tour. There's people in the dust spoke shirts, and just like they're like, oh, you know, blah blah blah, talking. I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm in that band. I made that shirt. That's so sick. It's very funny. That is so sick. Hell yes, dude. That must be the best feeling ever. Yeah. Yep. That, yeah, to be to be getting, getting rock recognized <laughs> when I was just there like two <laughs> months ago. Recognized, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yes, dude. Uh, we got tour coming up. We got content happening. Yep. Um, dialed. We are just about at our hour here. Uh, Very awesome. I like to touch on a couple things before you get out of here. Yes. Uh, one of the two things, two questions I like to ask people. Uh, one is, what are you currently learning? So there's a hundred oh. things that we are always trying to learn. And I think in the context of content and context of music, yes. it can be production. You mentioned that you're learning DAWs and getting into the production side mm -hmm. of stuff. What is one of the things you're in YouTube University for right now that you are actively trying to like get better at and understand more? Oh, get better at uh, just playing guitar. Like learning. <laughs> okay. oh, we have uh, a new song that we're playing. <laughs> okay. And just like getting that tight and stuff like that. Okay. That's one thing I'm learning. Uh, what is the learning process for that? Like just sitting down and playing it? Is it is it lessons? Is it learning music theory? Like what is the learning process? Uh, I listen tale? to the song first. And then if I have like any like, like, hey, I got a question of what part I'm playing here. I'll just hit Andy up. Mm -hmm. And that's usually how like the, most bands I've played in. It's just like, hey, like this part, you're playing this. Mm -hmm. Or like, oh, you're playing it like that. That's cool. Yep. You know what I mean? That, that uh, I've recently acquired a quad cortex. So getting that down and learning, Fanciest piece of technology learning to not yes. play through a tube amp is driving me bonkers. Interesting. As, it, it sounds like, yeah, yeah, the gear you liked has all been like cool vintage stuff. And yep. the quad is the antithesis of it, that. It is, but it's also like, oh, you know, I have a capture of a $4,000 amp I'm never going to buy in my life. Also very fair. And yeah. it sounds awesome. Hell yes. And That's, it just, that can kind of like, like tone, like a lot of people are just like, oh, you know, I plug into the, the distortion <laughs> and then it sounds like this. Tone can shape the way you play guitar. Interesting. And okay. that's like another thing. If you break it down, like to somebody who doesn't play guitar, they're like, okay, what do you mean by that? Which is me. Yeah. I mean, people what, say tone what, is in the hands. And I'm like, no, bitch, the notes are in the hand. Like, what I'm, are you talking about? It, it's, it's a huge cop out. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like most guitar players are like, yeah, that makes sense. So like, something with like too much gain can be like this, or mm -hmm. something with like too much bass response can like make you want to play a certain genre. Sure. Yeah. Hell yes. Okay, so currently learning songs, currently learning how to use a quad cortex. Yes. Uh, my other piece of this is, what are you doing outside of music? So we spent an hour now chatting about yeah. music, photo. Right. What do you like doing that is not related to, yeah, taking photos, playing guitar, playing bass? Uh, I, I work well, at a coffee shop. Hell yeah. So like I've been getting into like a lot of single origin and like weird co-ferments and stuff like that, tasting coffee. Okay. What is, uh, I'm a coffee ignorant, yes. but... Learn me something. What is the most obscure coffee you've tasted recently? What is most the thing obscure? that got, your, got, yeah, got you fired I'm, up? I'm really big into like, they will take single origin coffee and the farmers before roasting it will ferment it for three days in like a, like a press, like in a giant way they ferment okay. coffee and they'll throw like dragon fruit pieces in it or like yellow fruit pieces in it. So then when you get it in the bag and then you grind it and then you brew a cup with it and it just tastes like strawberries or it tastes like dragon fruit in a coffee. It's like, we're talking about single origin. It means like yeah. one farmer, one, one farm farmer from thing, one country you where know I, I mean? assume most coffee bags are. Yeah. Amalgamations yeah. of 10 different farms. that get tossed yeah. together. And most like blends you get will be like, you know, like a blend of like Ethiopia or Colombia or something like that. Where like single origin is like, it's one farmer. So it's going to be like up to quality, sure. up to their quality. Interesting. Yeah. Is there a is there a country that you like to find coffee from? Is like yeah. Where where is your yeah. ideal single origin? I, I tend to go to Ethiopia because like that is like the birthplace of like the coffee plant and stuff like that. So I feel like a lot of like a lot of people will ex like experiment more with okay. Ethiopia coffee. A lot of people would say Colombian coffee is just like you know like weird like high elevation stuff like that and like experiment with that more because like a lot of people will take like light roasts and like fruitier flavors okay and like i'm trying to like break this down a little bit i'm sure like coffee nerds like like gauge or like uh my bandmate rohan they're just like screaming at the camera right now <laughs> good but, yeah. come explain to yourself then homies yeah i'm sure i'll get a text for it but you know it's i've been really getting into coffee lately Hell yes. Yeah. Uh, are you, uh, there's a guy, uh, I work for a production company that does yes. like the concerts at uh, colleges. Yep. So the fall and spring concerts they put on, this is a production awesome. company that goes and works with them. Uh, one of the guys there has like, like a tiny carry-on suitcase for his clothes yep. and then like a big checked bag with his coffee maker. Pelican with the, co <laughs> yeah, with the coffee maker. Yeah. Is that your setup as well? You travel to like a, uh, it's not really like that. I have like one of the more expensive, like hand grinders and stuff like that. Okay. Like a lot of like enthusiasts like to go for uh, I, I do an AeroPress, honestly, like, like a nice camping like setup. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And you just need that hot water and like 
I'm I am like picky when it comes to coffee, but like I will also drink Seven Eleven coffee. I will drink. I love a Duncan. Sure, can't uh, go wrong. You can't go wrong with Duncan. <laughs> Uh, Hell yes. Yeah. Uh, any other entertainment or video games that we're playing? Any movies that we're into? TV shows we're into? Yeah. What, what? I'm a big movie head, so like I yeah. always just find something new, even if it's like new to me but old. You know, what I mean, like obviously, like I want to see like long legs and all this stuff. But uh, there's this uh, record store I'm shouting out right now. They're Please. they're in Bridgeport. They're called the Archive. Okay. There's just sometimes I will go in there and look at their tapes. And just like see a '70s slasher movie that's like an Italian like murder mystery, and I'll just like sometimes I'll just buy it. Hell yes! If, because it's just like it it piques my interest, and I feel like a lot of people are what is missing when it comes to like movies and stuff like that, and even record stores is like seeing something and like reading the back of it and just be like, I'll give it a shot. Because you yeah. can't rent it anymore. Yeah. So you got to like you know pay whatever six bucks the tape is or something mm -hmm. like that. Do you feel like that influences your content output? Like when you're taking photos and videos, are you drawing inspiration from movies you've seen? Oh, when I do like design work, mm -hmm. I love to just like look at like old like horror movie, even just like old 70s and 60s like movie posters. Okay. Like the typefaces and like the color combinations and like I've I rip those things a lot or just yeah. like take huge inspiration from. Sure. And I feel like that's everybody. Totally. Everybody normal. in graphic yeah. design. I run into this issue all the time yeah. where I'm just like not a film person, I'm not a TV person. Like yeah. I just it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. And it's this weird thing of like I'm producing visual art and I'm just not consuming it. So mm -hmm. I'm always playing this game of like, where do I get inspiration from? So I've like oh, yeah. I've tried to get into reading more. I do a lot of audiobooks of just like yeah. trying to find things that put ideas in my brain in a way that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And it's always this weird thing of like I've tried to make myself watch movies just for the sake of it. And mm -hmm. it's like, I, I just don't enjoy it. It's like not worth torturing myself. I feel it. it. That's fine. But I'm also aware of like the best music video would be made by Steven Spielberg yeah. or whatever. Like yeah, absolutely. whoever the expert of the visual thing is, is in Hollywood. They're do they're not in our industry anymore. They have transcended mm -hmm. us. So it's always this weird dilemma of like, yeah, I don't want to watch them just for the sake of it. But it's also like, I am aware that the best inspiration for me is probably in those things, mm -hmm. probably in the slashers from Italy yep. <laughs> from back of, in the day. Like the film stock. I don't know what film stock they were using back then, but like that, I draw a lot of inspiration for that for like presets I have for like taking mm -hmm. photos. Hell yes. Because like, uh, like the, oh, like the, it depends on like if it's a day or night scene or something like that. But like just like the color of like the foliage in the background or something sure. like that. I don't know what film stock they're using, but I try to copy it a bunch in like presets I, when I take pictures. So I wish I had more of that. I think yeah. that yeah, it's one. It's like an internal dilemma that I've had yeah. for years. Of like, like, I love the like blue and orange thing <laughs> photographers are doing, but like I'll see like a movie like there's a movie called Phenomena by okay. Dario Argento, and it, like it's an Italian horror movie and stuff like that. Um, but just like there's a lot of scenes in that movie that are just like shot in nature and just like I can't believe like the way like this foliage is looking and just like the way like a vehicle pops in front of the uh, like the foliage and stuff like that. I oh. really like I, I have an eye for that. Interesting. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoy going on to YouTube after after yep. these podcasts when I'm editing them and typing in the name of the yep. movie and going, yeah, show yeah. me show me a trailer. Show yeah, me that, a like Jennifer Connelly's in it. And it's like uh, love the movie poster for it. It's like got like got like hands with lightning on it. it's like really like vintage harley davidson shirt vibes to like the poster hell yes okay yeah, yeah it's uh, every time i'm talking with a band like oh we would like to reference blah blah yep. blah movie and i'm always like okay i'll, yep. I'll go check it out because uh -huh. i know nothing about it yeah uh, hell yes my man we did it mission accomplished here awesome. uh, episode 73 of from everyone with hunter lenoir uh yep. hunter before you get out of here where yes. can people find you on social media where can they follow you where can they hire you to go on tour with them to do content for them to join their band play their yep. show whatever they my at is you. casino x cowboy on Beautiful. twitter and twitter and instagram so that's the easiest way to find me hell yes that is the place to do it um yes for me uh leave a, i guess first off leave a like on the episode leave a comment on the episode subscribe do all the fun stuff there that i hate asking for but does help you gotta uh, do it i like to say it's a small enough show that like a single person liking it still affects it where it's like yep. when one person likes it, it's going to put in the algorithm for other people. And like, yeah, if there was a hundred thousand people listening, your one like doesn't really matter. But if there's a hundred people listening, your like really does. Add, yeah, add, absolutely. Add shape. So if you're listening, please do support. It does help. Um, yes. Go book. Uh, go see the spoke on tour in the next little bit. Uh, and my last little bit is yes, I'm booking music videos for the end of the year. So if you're interested in a music video with me, absolutely. let me know by the end of the year. If not, talk to you next year yep. <laughs> beautiful hunter i appreciate you you rock my man thanks Thank for coming you through again. Appreciate mission accomplished you. episode 73 from everyone we did it